So we all know that the Charlotte Bobcats had the worst winning percentage of all time back in 2012 when they went 7-59 in in a shortened NBA season. That was shortened due to lockdown purposes, and the Bobcats slash Hornets have still been one of the worst teams dating back to that point. It is exciting right now for them with Lamella Ball and Brandon Miller, but man, was it a dark time in the 2010s for the Hornets slash Bobcats under Kemba Walker, who they took in 2011. But we're going to rewrite history today. We are going to be doing a 10-year historic Bobcats rebuild, but we're going to start in the 2011 season. So no Kemba Walker. Kemba already went through enough trying to make this team relevant. So we're going to have somebody new on the squad going forward. This team is led by Gerald Wallace, Steven Jackson, DJ Augustine, who was the ninth overall pick back in 2008. You have Boris Diaw, Sean Livingston, Kwame Brown, former number one overall pick, Tyrus Thomas, former fourth overall pick, Gerald Henderson, Nazir Muhammad, Dizana Diop, Matt Carroll, Eduardo Nahara. This team went 34 and 48 under head coach Larry Brown. And oh yeah, this team did not have a first round pick in 2010 either. So we're going to see how they end up this year in 2011. I mean, this team was teetering to becoming a rebuilding team. So I want to make sure that we do it properly so we don't end up with the worst winning percentage percentage of all time. So guys that I'm going to be building around going forward, I mean, DJ Augustine still has two years left on his rookie contract, so I don't think I'd like for him to go anywhere. Gerald Henderson Jr. still got three years potentially left on his deal, so I'd like to keep him around. Diop can go. I think Nahara could eventually go. Tyrese Thomas, or Tyrese Thomas, excuse me. I'd like to get off of that contract sooner than later. Steven Jackson, yes, is one of our top guys, but he's 32 years old. The contract is ascending over time. I should try to get out of that sooner than later before he regresses. Boris Diaw is a fine player, don't get me wrong, but two years left on his deal, I could look to move that. I'd like to hold on to Gerald Wallace, though. I don't think I want to move him anytime soon. So we start off the season on the road against the Dallas Mavericks. We end up losing 131-110. Steven Jackson had 28 points in this one. So the goal this year is, yeah, for definitely the veterans and the guys I said I would like to trade to build up that trade value by the time of the trade deadline. And the 2011 draft class in which they got Kemba Walker was obviously a very good one. You had Kawhi, Butler, Kemba, Kyrie, Clay, Vucevic, some really good players in this draft class that I don't think we can mess up on, especially if we're picking in the top five and this was the og lottery odds as well so if you end up with like the number one overall projected pick there was a 25 percent chance you were going to get that pick which is higher than what it is now all right so we're approaching the 2011 trade deadline we're 14 and 37 there's no reason for us not to move steven jackson right now or somebody like that it's funny we're 14 and 37 but we're the fourth worst team in the nba the kings are really bad they ended up getting Jimmer for dead in this class. The Suns are really bad. The Pistons are also really bad. And Steven Jackson is averaging 18 and a half points, five rebounds, and three assists. I mean, back at this time, if you had a bad three-point percentage, it wasn't the end of the world. So I think we should have no issue moving him. So I wonder if the Golden State Warriors would be interesting in, or interested in reacquiring Steven Jackson. Could I get two first-round picks? And for some reason, Vladimir Obdanovich is two-star trade value. I don't really agree with that. Uh, they would counter it with Tyrus Thomas, and I get Hito Turkoglu. All right, Hito's not on the greatest contract in the world, but he is a solid three-point shooter. I'm actually not opposed to this deal. Tyrus Thomas, I don't really want to commit that much money to him long-term. I'm going to get two future first-round picks from the Warriors in the Andrew Wiggins draft and the Carl Anthony Towns draft. We're going to send Steven Jackson back to Golden State, where he had some of the best years of his career. And I'm going to make this trade with the New Orleans Hornets. So a team that has some similarities to the Bobcats. We're going to be sending them Kwame Brown and Nazir Muhammad, as well as a 2012 second round pick for Willie Green. Yeah, the guy who ended up currently coaching the New Orleans Pelicans. But I'm also getting Trevor Ariza in this deal, who's 25 years old. He's making a little bit of money that the Hornets are trying to get off of it. But I do like the idea of having Trevor Ariza and Gerald Wallace as our perimeter defenders on the wing something to get excited about. So here is the updated rotation with Sean Livingston still being the starting point guard this year. He is averaging 9.7 points, 3.7 assists, 1.1 steals, and you know the mid-range is elite with him. We're going to have Ariza as the starting shooting guard. Gerald Wallace, who is unhappy right now, it's fine as the starting small forward. Boris Dio as the starting power forward. I think it's more likely he gets traded in the offseason. Diop's going to be the starting center for the rest of the year. And DJ Augustine has been great this year. Um, I thought he was. He's averaging six assists, but maybe his efficiency has really created over the last few weeks, which is unfortunate, but he's still 23 years old. Gerald Henderson has been solid this year as well. That could be the backcourt for the future. Also, Obi Turkoglu, Bogdanovich coming off the bench as we are going to be most likely pretty bad for the rest of the season. Luckily, we do own all our first round picks going forward. Hmm, I actually know in 2013, it's top 10 protected to the Bulls. So by then, 
I mean, I could be bad, but 2014, I should try to be good by then, which is a decent amount of time from now. And LeBron wins the 2011 MVP award. This was the year that Derrick Rose ended up winning it, becoming the youngest MVP in NBA history. Rookie of the year goes to Blake Griffin of the LA Clippers, Manu Ginobili, sixth man of the year, LeBron Depoy, most improved Kyle Lowry. Scott Brooks is your coach of the year of that very good Thunder team. And the executive of the year goes to the Chicago Bulls GM. All NBA first team. What a time, man. Russ, D. Rose, LeBron, Duncan, and Dwight Howard. Second team, you have Cousins, Griffin, Josh Schmidt, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Paul. And third team, you have Rondo, Kobe, Dirk, Pau Gasol, and Andrew Bynum. Ton of Lakers there on third team. Here's all defensive first team. Some notable names, as you'd expect. And on all defensive second team, there's Andre Iguodala on the Philadelphia 76ers. All rookie first team, multiple Wizards. And then, oh man, I just missed that like Wizards color scheme. I think the Wizards need a rebrand more than any team in the NBA. So back then, there was no play in tournament. So we ended up finishing the 2011 season with a 20 and 62 record, which was the third worst record in the NBA because the Suns were awful, led by Steve Nash. Not sure how that happened. And the Kings, I guess as expected, were also bad with Tyreek Evans and Demarcus Cousins. And our leading scorer this year was DJ Augustine. I'm surprised he didn't maybe win six man of the year. Gerald Wallace was not good. So there'd be even no point in trading him, selling well in him. He's unhappy with the team right now, which is fine. I still want to keep him around, have a couple OG Bobcats throughout this. And honestly, it's probably nostalgia speaking to me, but I don't really want to change our team name to the Hornets. I kind of want to stay as the Bobcats. And the LA Lakers win the 2011 NBA Finals. This ended up being the Dallas Mavericks over the Miami Heat, but instead the LA Lakers with Pau Gasol beat the Miami Heat in seven games. Damn, game seven, 92-81 LA. So Shaq ends up retiring on the Boston Celtics. There goes Juwan Howard, Kurt Thomas, Theo Ratliff, Joe Smith, Derek Fisher, Grant Hill, Ben Wallace. So some notable names ended up retiring. Shaq ends up going to the Hall of Fame and here were the Jersey retirements as well. So the Washington Wizards are going to rebrand. Same with the New York Knicks. I want to keep the Bobcats as they are for right now. And to be honest with you, I want to add expansion teams sooner than later. So we're going to have some, maybe not next year, maybe the year after that, since we got 10 years of this. So please, third overall pick, I'd love to go to number one. I'd love to get Kawhi Leonard on this team, but I'd also be fine with Kyrie Irving or Klay Thompson, even Jimmy Butler too. I believe we could fall to the sixth overall pick. Luckily, we do not. That is going to go to Cleveland, who did win the original 2011 draft lottery. The Timberwolves are picking number five. Number four, don't drop me. Don't drop me to four. All right, so the Charlotte Bobcats are staying in the top three. Let's go. Come on, no way we stay at three, right? Let's move up into the top two. Boom, there we go. David Stearns is on our side, man. Let's go. So we have a chance to add. We, we know we're getting Kyrie Irving or Kawhi Leonard or one of the top guys. We go from three to two, which means the number one overall pick is going to be the Phoenix Suns. So our head coach right now is Larry Brown. I don't mind keeping him around. I don't think we need to fire a coach right now and pay two of them. So we're going to keep him here at least for one more season. And guys, we're going to work out. I don't know if I could just do three of them. So we're going to do Kawhi. We're going to do Jimmy. We're going to do Kyrie. We're going to do Clay. Your name has to start with a K, I guess. And yeah, it's going to be one of these four guys we're going to be taking with the second overall pick. I guess if we take Kyrie, that means there's probably no point in having DJ Augustine. I mean, or Sean Livingston. We could move one of them. I think it's either going to be Kawhi or Kyrie. I feel like the Suns at number one are going to take Kawhi. And I'm going to make a trade with the Toronto Raptors. I'm going to be giving them Diop, Nahara, and our 2015 second. We're going to be getting Greg Patterson. Not even sure if he's a real dude. No offense to him. But we're also going to be getting the 27th overall pick from the Raptors. So let's see. Number one. And did I say David Stern? It's not the Mets GM. David Stern. The Phoenix Suns. I think are going to take Kawhi Leonard, and they do just that. So I'm definitely tempted to taking Kyrie Irving here. Jimmy Butler could also be a possibility, or Clay Thompson. I have to take Kyrie Irving here. We're going to take him here with the number two overall pick out of Duke. I assume three is going to be Jimmy Butler. Could it be a shocker? Oh, okay, a little bit of a shocker. It is Kemba Walker, who ended up going to the Bobcats. Goes three here to Sacramento. Kemba Walker and Tyreek Evans to the backcourt. Better than Jimmy Fredette is. Oh, Marcus Morris to the Raptors at four. Not sure if I think that's going to work out. Jonas Valanciunas goes five like he did in real life. Jimmy Butler ends up going to Cleveland at six. So kind of stays geographically close to Marquette, uh, state to state wise. And then Klay Thompson ends up going to Utah. Yeah, they had a chance, but they wanted Alec Burks. And there's no real players here, so I didn't really want to take anybody. So I'm going to move Greg Patterson and the 2011 pick for OKC's 2015 first round pick. It's a couple years from now. Maybe KD's gone. Maybe Russ is gone. Maybe Harden's gone. So we are going to sign Kyrie Irving, who is now going to be the face of this Bobcats franchise. What does that mean for DJ Augustine? No, it could switch things up for sure. I think I should move him or Sean Livingston as Carmelo Anthony's a free agent. 
Chauncey Billups is a free agent. Oh, so Sean Livingston is a free agent. He's 25 years old, though. I would like to bring him back on a three-year deal. He can always become a trade piece down the line. So we're going to give him $3 million a year. He is 6'7". seven. can make him a small forward. And we are going to sign Sean Livingston. I'd like to possibly bring back Matt Carroll as well. And then I'm just going to sign a bunch of centers. First one, you may know him. He's on ESPN, Kendrick Perkins. And then the second one, oh, it's not going to be Eric Dampier. He ends up getting picked up. So we're actually going to make another trade here with the Raptors. We're going to be sending Hito Turkoglu, who we got last year, and a 2014 second. I I'm afraid... I hate that I'm moving all my seconds, but this is going to save us at least $10 million going forward. We're going to get Diop back, who's probably going to be the backup center to Kendrick Perkins. I'm also going to sign Carl Landry to a two-year deal and Peja Stoyakovich to a two-year deal. Two former Kings. So player progression, Gerald Wallace does not regress, which is good given how unhappy he was last year. Boris Dio, um, I think is still going to get traded. I don't think it's going to be at the start of the year. It's more likely it's going to be at the deadline. We got to figure out how we're going to allocate these point guard minutes this season, which is going to be a big topic for us. All right, so this is going to be the nine-man rotation. It's going to be Kyrie. I have to start him. He's going to start at the point guard spot. We got Ariza at the two, Walls at the three, Dio at the four, and Perkins at the five. With Augustine, Livingston, Henderson, Carl Landry off the bench. So Landry's going to be like kind of the backup center instead of Dizana Dia. And I think this year, a notable move we can make is trading away Boris Dio. And then the possibility that I end up moving either Sean Livingston or DJ Augustine. Game one on the road against the Dallas Mavericks. We start off the season with a loss, 120. 116 Dirk dropped 32 points against us but Kyrie Irving in his NBA debut dropped 34 but we do start off the season unfortunately 0-3 uh yeah I mean I don't really expect to be all that good this year I hope Kyrie Irving could beat out Kawhi Leonard for rookie of the year and we do own our first round pick going into the 2012 draft I mean if I could win the lottery and get Anthony Davis that could be franchise changing. All right, so we're not going to finish as bad as the 2012 Bobcats, but we are flirting with it right now. But at least Gerald Wallace isn't upset with this team that is currently 12 and 40 at the bottom of the Eastern Conference that has a negative 12 point differential right now on the season. The only team worse than us is the 9 and 45 Utah Jazz. I don't know how they're this bad with Williams, Clay, Hayward, and Paul Millsap. I'm kind of speechless right now seeing they're that bad. But seeing just where we are, we have a long ways to go. Kyrie Irving is putting up MVP numbers in his rookie year. So at least we have our franchise point guard going forward and could maybe make us a playoff team next year. Gerald Wallace, I want to keep him around. I want to make him a Bobcat, not for life because he did start off in Sacramento, but somebody we could retire his number at the end of this video. Gerald Henderson's shot has taken a step back this year, which is unfortunate. I do think a move I am going to make at this deadline is trading away Boris Diaw. All right, we're trying to just get some draft capital. We're going to send Boris Diaw to the LA Lakers, a team trying to repeat and win it all next year. We're also going to send them Peja Stoyakovich as well, who hasn't cracked our rotation in exchange for the Lakers 2014 first round pick, you know, and be Jokic, Wiggins, Jabbar Parker on this draft class. Maybe one of these picks turn out. And Derek Character here, I'm not even sure if he's a real player by any means, but he's in the last year of a large deal. I don't think he's real. Wow. Wow. I am. I'm wrong. He is real. <laughs> I'm sorry to Derek here. He did play one year with the Lakers in 2011. That's on me. It's just a contract is definitely messed up, but we're going to be doing this trade, and that's pretty much going to be it. I don't think I'm going to move DJ Augustine. I tried, but I really couldn't find anything. Okay, wait a second. Gerald Wallace is going to refuse to resign with us, and he's got a $10 million player option that he can opt out of. Uh, yeah, that could definitely change what I do with him right now. I mean, that is very unfortunate because I wanted to re-sign Gerald Wallace. I want to keep him around. I can't really find any trades with him. I think I'm still going to try to keep him around in the offseason and hope for the best, which is definitely a risky move. As Russell Westbrook ends up winning the 2012 MVP award in the final year of his rookie deal in OKC, Kawhi Leonard beats, wow, Kyrie Irving for Rookie of the Year. Even though Kyrie averaged 23 and a half points and 4.3 assists, I think he was robbed. Brandon Jennings is your sixth man of the year in Milwaukee. Yeah, really good young scoring guard right now. He's coming off the bench. I'm not sure to who. I'll have to check that out. Andrew Bogut wins deep point in Milwaukee. They are building something good there. Steph most improved. Scott Brooks, coach of the year. OMB first team, you already have Blake Griffin as a 23-year-old in his second full season in this league. OMB second team, you got Steph, Rose, Duncan, Love, and Andrew Bynum. Yeah, Love, really good in Minnesota. And here is third team. No super surprising players. Here's all defensive first team. Um, no Bobcats. All defensive second team. No Bobcats. A lot of top names have been mentioned here as we ended up getting Kyrie Irving on all rookie first team. Our only award. So Milwaukee getting six man of the year and Depoy did not make the playoffs. They were actually just as bad as we were. So I don't know if they're building anything there. They signed Chauncey Billups who probably did not live up to his contract. 
They gotta start Brandon Jennings over him. What are you doing? So we are definitely gonna have an interesting offseason upon us. We know we have our franchise player in Kyrie Irving. Now it's time to build around him. We have Gerald Wallace, who I would like to bring back. I think he could be a great complimentary defender, great rebounder for us going forward. So I still wanna get an extension done with him. Gerald Wallace, shot took a step back. Uh, good thing, I think he's got a player option. We'll see if he opts out of it. DJ Augustine, did not shoot the ball super well. He's due for a contract extension. I think I'm leaning towards Livingston being the full-time backup next year. And we either sign and trade Augustine this offseason or let him walk. And we definitely need to figure out the big man spots going forward because Kendrick Perkins was bad. But a disappointing player, Trevor Ariza, just forgot how to shoot from last year to this year, which is kind of sad, honestly. So I don't even know if he's going to be in the rotation. He's making a decent amount of money. So let's see who's going to be going to the 2012 Conference Finals. Uh, in the Eastern Conference, you are going to have the Orlando Magic with Dwight Howard versus the Boston Celtics. And in the West, you're going to have the Lakers, okay, who ended up making a trade with us against the OKC Thunder, a team we have also made trades with before. And let's see who's going to be going to the NBA Finals. It's going to be the Magic and the Thunder. The Heat were a four seed, just kind of crazy. So let's see who wins the NBA Finals. And it is going to be the Orlando Magic. Wow, Dwight Howard is able to defeat... KD, Russ, and Harden in the NBA Finals. That's kind of unreal. And there goes Jason Kidd, Jerry Stackhouse, Steve Nash on the Phoenix Suns, Camby, Eric Dampier, Vince Carter. It's funny, he retires 35 years old. He ended up playing till the 2020 season. And there goes Phil Jackson. He retires as the Lakers head coach. Jason Kidd, Steve Nash, and Vince Carter head to the Hall of Fame. Two of these guys ended up becoming head coaches in the NBA. Jason Kidd gets his jersey retired by the Nets and Nash by the Suns. And we are not going to be changing the logo of the Charlotte Bobcats. We are going to veto that as the New Jersey Nets are going to become the Brooklyn Nets. And I think next year going into, so this is the 2012 offseason and the 2013 offseason, we're going to add some expansion teams to the NBA. So we are projected the second overall pick in this year's draft. I don't know if there's a protection on Utah's pick, but there's a chance they were the worst team in the NBA and their picks got to go to Minnesota. All right, so let's figure out where we're going to be picking in the top five. Seeing the Hornets at eight kind of scared me for a little bit, but no, we are staying as the Bobcats and we are staying in the top four are we going to drop from two to four no so the timberwolves via utah that pick drops from one to four are we going to be picking third no so in the 2012 draft the bobcats had the best odds of getting number one they fell to two to take michael kidd gilchrist can we get the reverse can we go from two to one here in 2012 yes sir as the charlotte bobcats win the 2012 draft lottery and think about how different this franchise would be if they were able to pair up anthony davis and kemba walker but instead we're gonna have anthony davis and kyrie irving we're also gonna fire larry brown all right so i offered a lot of assistant head coaching jobs i don't know if they're gonna get blocked and they do so i was trying to get budenholzer from the spurs terry stott or michael malone they all say no so we're gonna get former player sam cassell to be our head coach and for the pre-draft workouts while there are maybe some hall of famers outside of ad in damian Lord and draymond green in consideration for number one we're only bringing one guy to a workout and that's ad how crazy would it be if there was like a storyline saying anthony davis would like would refuse to go to you in the draft because you kind of see those sometimes so that would be cool if 2k implemented that i don't think they ever will i feel like i would have so many ideas for 2k that they could really just Keep the same like menu screens and all that. That's fine, even though that's annoying, but it would take a lot of work to do, sure. But I think I could have a lot of internal ideas. But here we get Anthony Davis with the number one pick. We got to figure out, do we like him at the power forward spot or the center spot? As Draymond Green goes number two to Houston, Damian Lillard number three to Milwaukee, Bradley Beal number four to Minnesota, and Harrison Barnes number five to Sacramento. So here is how kind of like the rest of the lottery ended up. Chris Middleton fell to 12 to Toronto. When did the auto-generated players start? Around 21. Okay, so 20 real players entering this. We're going to sign AD, obviously. Gerald Wallace opts out. Same with Gerald Henderson Jr. And Diop had a $7 million player option. That's on me for not realizing. So free agency has Darren Williams, uh, Chris Paul, and Dwight Howard. Imagine we had Dwight Howard and Anthony Davis in our front court. That'd be kind of insane. Yeah, Chris Paul being a free agent is kind of insane. And we do have the cap space to sign him. I'm probably not. Andrew Bynum would be interesting, like him and Anthony Davis in the front court. But I think I'm going to go after somebody a little bit cheaper. And that's going to be Chris Kamen. I want to see if I can land him on a two-year deal worth $4 million, Throw a team option on the second year. And I'm not sure if he's going to accept it, but we're going to try to bring back Gerald Wallace on a three-year $30 million contract. He does have some other offers. I'm not sure if any of them are real. We're about to find out. I guess not, because we get him back three years 32.4 million dollars um let's not renounce the rights on augustine or gerald wallace just yet or excuse me uh, gerald henderson and we also had ime odoka on the team as well which is kind of funny so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna re-sign dj augustine 
And then we're going to trade him. And we're also going to re-sign Gerald Henderson as well. And we're going to keep getting these first round picks. I'm going to send DJ Augustine to Phoenix. They're looking to replace Steve Nash with Augustine. We're giving them Diop. We're getting Marco Bellinelli, who's 22 years old. Hopefully could be a really good three-point shooter for us and a 2014 top three protected first round pick. So I'm getting a lot of assets here in the 2014 draft. We are going to have some decent draft capital because our pick is top 10 protected in the 2013 draft. And we are going to send Gerald Henderson to the New York Knicks for a top 10 protected pick in 2014 as well. I got to take on Andy Tucker's one-year deal. And we're going to look to sign three new guys here. Luke Babbitt on a two-year deal. Andres Beatrice on a two-year deal, which I think is kind of a valuable pickup right there. And then Mike Bibby on a one-year deal. So Derek Rose goes back to the Bulls. Dwight Howard back to the Magic. A lot of guys are resigning. Chris Paul resigns. Kevin Love resigns. I'm cool with that. Darren Williams resigns. Ray Allen resigns with Boston. Who was the biggest switch up? I guess it was Chris Kamen, which is kind of crazy, but I'm all for that. So Kyrie Irving is up to an 85 overall. There's Gerald Wallace, who came back on a three-year deal. And with Anthony Davis being super NBA ready, us signing Chris Kamen, I think this team can make the playoffs this season, or at least be in the conversation. All right, so here is our starting five for year number three in the 2013 season. We all know that the 2013 draft had Giannis, but nobody knew that Giannis was going to become Giannis. We have Perry Irving and Marco Bellinelli. Not the greatest defensive backcourt, but it's going to be a lot of fun offensively. The defense comes in at the 3-4-5 with Gerald Wallace, Anthony Davis, and Chris Kamen. And then the bench is Sean Livingston, uh, Carl Landry, Trevor Ariza, Andres Biedrins, and Luke Babbitt. After last year's season from Kendrick Perkins, I really don't want to play him. This year, though, we don't own any other random first-round picks. We do own, um, or Chicago owns our pick if it's outside the top 10, which I'm honestly okay if we lose the 12th overall pick in the 2013 draft. We have a lot of picks for 2014 and 2015 on the table right now. We did start out the season losing to the Memphis Grizzlies, but I do think that we are going to be in an okay spot going forward, led by AD and Kyrie. And then we ended up winning the next two. So I think for the first time in this video, we are above 500 after three games. Okay, Andres Biedrins, can we develop you into being our starting center maybe if Chris Kamen does not work out long term? And for the first time in this video, we're not <laughs> complete garbage at the trade deadline. We're not above 500, but hey, we're the ninth seed. We're farting for a playoff spot right now we're not where we used to be that's where like the Atlanta Hawks are in the New York Knicks damn the Rockets are really bad because they don't have James Harden and the Dallas Mavericks all right so we are going to add two expansion teams at the end of the year teams I've never added before shout out to these uh design creators man they do a great job so San Diego Wildcats there's going to be I guess a third Southern California team obviously two LA teams now you got the Wildcats adding in Golden State and Sacramento that's five California teams and we're going to add in the Austin Bullets so now there's going to be four Texas teams as well with San Antonio, Dallas, Houston, and now Austin. And we are here at the trade deadline. I don't think I'm in a rush to make a move right now. Uh, Marco Bellinelli is a free agent, and that's maybe why these sons, like, wanted to get rid of him they weren't going to afford him and they cashed in at the highest price but i don't think i want to trade him he's actually been really good for us and even if he doesn't start long term i think he can come off the bench i believe he will be restricted at the end of the year i mean trevor ariza has uh, become not good for us but honestly if he's so bad that he's costing me two and a half mil a year i'm actually going to resign him on that and i don't know how to fix him i think i'm just going to tell him to stop taking threes which is a shame because yeah he was a good three-point shooter with the houston rockets in like that 2018-19 era and Kyrie irving his scoring has gone down a little bit but with the addition of anthony davis who's putting up 18 and 10 as a rookie 50% from three as he taken, I was going to say two threes. Okay, but you know what? Eventually, I want AD to actually shoot the ball. As Kobe Bryant gets an MVP award at the age of 34, he averaged 35 points, seven and a half rebounds, and five assists. Anthony Davis wins rookie of the year after Kyrie got stumped last year. I'm glad AD won it this year. The only other guy was Bradley Beal. So yeah, it was unanimous for him. Manu wins six man of the year. Duncan wins Depoy. Darrell Arthur, most improved. He actually dropped like a team high for the Grizzlies on opening night against us. And I was like, that's weird. And he ends up winning most improved, which is kind of cool. Here is all NBA first team, all NBA second team. I wonder if I'm going to see Kyrie or AD on third team. Uh, we do. We see Anthony Davis as a rookie on all NBA third team. Let's go. But unfortunately, the Charlotte Bobcats did not make the playoffs in year number three. I think in year number four, we're going to be going in the right direction. I mean, last year, we ended up winning 21 games. We won 18 more this year. The duo of AD and Kyrie getting even better. We will be just fine in the 2014 season. We're going to have draft picks to potentially move. It's funny. These are two of the best teammates in LeBron's career. You, I don't think you could say the two best because of Dwayne Wade, but they are up there and they're going to hopefully lead the Bobcats to a dynasty one day. Gerald Wallace, 
The efficiency has not been good, but like I said, I just like that he's an OG Bobcat still on the squad. And let's find out the winner of the 2013 NBA Finals. It's going to be between the Heat and the Suns, and oh my god, I think the Heat just blew a 3-0 lead, and Kawhi Leonard is going to show everyone that he was the best guy from that 2011 draft class. He just made the Suns relevant in two years, and they won it all. Wow, that is kind of insane. In game number one, went to Miami, two went to Miami, yeah, Miami blew a 3-0 lead to Kawhi. Wow. So, yeah, LeBron just going up against Kawhi. The Cavs went to Game 7 in round number 2. Shout out to Jimmy Butler, man. He was phenomenal in the playoffs. All right. So, we are here in the 2013 offseason. I feel like this is the offseason that we turn all this around. Mike Bibby ends up retiring. Is that going to be the only Bobcat? Yes, it will be. Staff retirements. Larry Brown ends up retiring. So, yeah, we're going to be looking for, I guess a new head coach but like i mean it is a different day for me but i'm like 99 percent sure i thought i'd replace live round either way it doesn't really matter kg retires gets his jersey number retired by two different teams um we're gonna adopt an incremental luxury tax the hornets are gonna go to the pelicans and the suns are gonna rebrand and yeah we are gonna add the two new expansion teams to the league players must play in 65 games to be eligible for major individual awards it's cool that was could be a thing that could have dated back then but injuries are off so that doesn't really matter and it is time for some realignment so yeah it would make sense to have the austin bullets in the southwest division where there's now four teams from texas in that division san diego wildcats are going to go to the pacific division and who knows maybe by the end of this rebuild we're going to have all these spots filled out and we're going to have 36 teams in the nba the Wizards are going to join the Atlantic, and the Grizzlies are going to be joining the Southeast as well. So yeah, the Wizards leave the Southeast, and we're going to have the Grizzlies join this division. And it is draft lottery time. The Bobcats don't have anything here. So our pick is at 11, which is kind of unfortunate that we could lose it unless it jumps up into the top four. So let's see if we get lucky. And we do not actually drop to 13, which is kind of crazy, dropping two spots. So one of those teams or two of those teams in that top four got pretty lucky. So it was either the Bucks, the Knicks, um, maybe the Rockets that ended up getting kind of lucky. No, I mean, hmm, I'm not really sure how we dropped two spots in the lottery oh because now we do have the uh expansion teams in it never mind that made sense then yeah i we hired sam cassell so i was thrown off by the larry brown thing i just couldn't remember who we did hire john ham not the actor we're gonna get as our team doctor so before the 2013 draft we do have to protect our players and yeah the number one ranked guy is Giannis Antetokounmpo. makes a ton of sense there the one player we're probably gonna lose is luke babbitt which i'm okay with to be honest with you though i could throw up trevor ariza instead which honestly, I'm going to do. I'm going to protect Luke Babbitt instead of Trevor Ariza. And that could save us a little bit of money um, if somebody does draft Ariza. And I'm sure he will get drafted. So the number one pick in the expansion draft, the Austin Bullets select OJ Mayo. And yeah, Trevor Ariza was the third pick. You had Courtney Lee go second. There's Corey Joseph. And yeah, there's going to be some bad players in this expansion draft. But they will have a ton of cap space to sign somebody in free agency. So the Milwaukee Bucks with the number one pick. They still get Giannis Antetokounmpo here in a 2013 draft. Victor Oladipo goes number two to the Knicks. The Rockets get Otto Porter at three. The Austin Bullets at number four are actually trading their first ever draft pick to the Knicks along with OJ Mayo for Raymond Felton and Daniel Gallinari. Okay. And the Knicks get Dennis Schroeder in this draft. And the San Diego Wildcats get Rudy Gobert with their first ever draft pick. So we had our second round pick. Unfortunately, it's not going to be a player we are going to sign. So we are going to pick up the rookie team option on Kyrie. We're going to pick up the team option on Chris Kamen as well. I feel like he is a good big man for us going forward. I'm not sure if he's going to start next year. I'd assume he's going to. So we do have just, what, seven guys under contract right now. All seven, I think, could be in the rotation next year. And we do have a little bit of cap space to work with as well. I can't afford like a Steph Curry or James Harden, but I could afford somebody else. Now, I just want to look at our salary cap breakdown because if we have cap space next year, I could look at somebody else. So yeah, Livingston's going to be up. Cayman's going to be up. Potential Andres Piedrins and Luke Babbitt. So I don't think I'm going to max out anybody completely right now. Even though like getting, I don't know, who is that? Uh, that Dante Green? Interesting. I mean, Andrew Bynum could get us a legitimate center next to AD. Man, Brooke Lopez would be a ton of fun as well if he could develop that three-point shot. Him and AD in that front court could be a lot of fun. But I think we're going to try to hold off on some of this cap space going forward. I still want to evaluate what we have. I don't want to make any, like, irrational moves. So we have our point guard depth. We could look for a new shooting guard now that Ariz is gone. And I guess Marco Bellinelli is a free agent, so we could look to bring him back. And he wants just $5 million a year. I'm going to lock him up on a two... I mean, three-year extension worth that money. Team option on the last year. 
I feel like that's a steal of a contract. So Landry, we could potentially bring back if we want to. Kendrick Perkins, I don't really need to renounce their rights yet. Yeah, Carl Landry on a three-year deal, honestly. Like, that could become very valuable down the line with the salary cap going up. So let's get him back three years, 4.72 million. And I don't really love him as a player right now, but I'm going to do the same thing with Kendrick Perkins because I think that could be a really good depth piece for us. So we're kind of going to run this team back and hope the internal development can get us um, in a playoff spot next year as Curry, Harden, Jennings, they all return. Juan Carlos Navarro, an undrafted player a couple of years ago. All right, that's pretty cool. He's come onto the scene. Dante Green, is it the same thing? Now he's the 28th pick in 08. There you have DeMar DeRozan. Andrew Bynum is going to go to the Phoenix Suns. Okay, Serge Ibaka stays with the Thunder. I mean, yeah, like could Kevin Durant become a free agent soon or Russell Westbrook? Not sure. Like, I could still afford Brooke Lopez if I wanted to, but we're going to hold on to that or hold off on that right now. I'm not really sure who this Trey Warwick guy is. He was undrafted out of Providence a couple years ago. He really broke out onto the scene for the Kings last year. I mean, I'm fine giving you a one-year deal. Honestly, why not? He looks like a pretty good player, and we're going to get him here on a one-year deal. So here is the player progression tab as Kyrie Irving is up to a 91 overall. There's Trey Warwick at an 89. All right, this guy out of nowhere, 6'8". Okay, he's 26 years old. I mean, this is going to be a nasty big three. What's the player progression rate is on like 20, and this guy just goes up seven overalls. AD looking so good already. Livingston came in starting to regress. And yeah, Carl, uh, Carl Landry's regressing a ton. Maybe he robbed us. And the 2014 draft class is definitely going to be a little bit better with the guys that I've talked about in this video so far. Jokic, Embiid, you have Wiggins, Dante X, some second rank guy. We'll, we'll see about that. But we have a chance to have some draft picks here in 2014-5 projected picks right now including ours i mean that Knicks pick can't go in the top 10 sun's not in the top three but we'll see if the warriors are going to be bad we'll see if the lakers are going to be bad so this is what the starting five and the rotation is going to look like Kyrie at the one trey warwick at the two gerald wallace at the three ad at the four and chris came in at the five with bellinelli sean livingston who's been an og bobcat for us is going to be the seventh man andres pedrins as the eighth man babbitt um as well as the ninth man so none of these guys are going to get minutes we had to pick up Kalina Azabuki, don't remind me about him. I just hate hearing his name because he was the main piece the Knicks got back in 2010 when they traded David Lee, my favorite Nick at the time, the only Nick that actually gave a shit, part of my French, for a whole season and hustled every night. And they traded him for Azabuki, Anthony Randolph, and Ronnie Turioff. It was a disaster of a Knicks front office. We have Sheldon Coles, uh, Quincy Battle. These guys will not see the rotation. Under Sam Cassell, we are a three-star balance team. And over the years, we're going to have to figure out, like, what is this team dynamic going to be? Is it going to be best utilized with Anthony Davis as the center or the power forward? But I feel like this one-two punch should do wonders this season, and they're going to continue to progress. And I think that's our window, trying to get maybe another max guy or like the first max guy here to Charlotte while we still have AD and Kyrie on these team options or excuse me these rookie deals so we are here at the trade deadline and boy has this team broken out and I'm glad we didn't make any like nearsighted moves in the offseason we have an 8.3 point differential with mostly the core we have now we did obviously sign this Trey Warwick guy who was playing well enough where he could earn an extension somehow a 90 overall don't think that's a diamond in a rough I feel like that is just a great pickup by us Gerald Wallace though oh my god God. there's only so much longer we can go with his shooting ability here but i want to keep him around anthony davis is playing like an all nba talent in year number two i think chris Kamen is fine enough as our center you go to the bench like marco bellinelli i mean he could be the starting shooting guard if we get priced out on work in the offseason sean livingston has done a great job as the backup point guard andres bedrins i think could also be the starting center eventually at one point luke babbitt's an elite three-point shooter i really like this team i don't think i'm gonna make any trades at the deadline i think we're gonna ride with this team for the most part. And something I'd like to do is extend Sean Livingston. I'd like to give him a three-year deal. I could give him a four-year deal. We'll get, we'll do a three-year deal and he's going to accept that. And he's going to be our backup point guard for years to come here. He's already spent now, this is his fourth year in Charlotte. Hopefully we're going to have him here for three more. And just taking a look at the award races throughout the week, Anthony Davis, number one in the MVP conversation right now. That is pretty incredible. Here's the rookie of the year race. The guy that won it in real life is at the top of the ladder right now. Oh my God. I already said I didn't want to hear about Queen Azabuki or Ronnie Turioff or Anthony Randolph. Do not remind me of this guy whatsoever. Did not work out in New York when he ended up going there. And most improved, yeah, you have a lot of San Diego Wildcats right now. And then maybe just to take a look, I mean, why not? Who are the upcoming free agents? Kawhi Leonard, but he's obviously restricted. Well, yeah, those are team options there. DeMarcus Cousins, I believe, will be restri uh, restricted. Carmelo Anthony's a free agent. Now, could he be the Gerald Wallace replacement? That is definitely something interesting right now to look at. So there's going to be some notable free agents here. We'll see who becomes available. And in year number two, 
the generational town, Anthony Davis. I would say Anthony Davis was a generational town. I don't want that word to be thrown around too much, but when you look at number one overall picks that have lived up to the hype since the year, we'll just say 2003, you're going through the list right now. I'm just doing it in my head. Like, obviously, Greg Oden, head of Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant was number two. You talk about Blake Griffin. I don't think he maybe lived up to the hype through the longevity because of his knees kind of giving out. John Wall, same thing. Injuries caught up to him. Now, Anthony Davis has been banged up, but I think he's still coming along strong. Like in 2024, he just started off the season against Minnesota with a monster performance. And I think he's lived up to the hype more than most of the number one overall draft picks you could say since LeBron, maybe outside eventually Wemby. Because the best guys from the draft class don't come from the number one overall pick all the time. Like Tatum was three, Luka was three, Kevin Durant was two. Michael Carter Williams wins rookie of the year. Grievous Vasquez, sixth man of the year. It's how the Raptors got OG and Anobi. Fun fact, LeBron averaging 19 points. Okay, deep boy. Is he going to be a free agent? Tyreek Evans, most improved. Coach of the year goes to Scott Brooks again. All-NBA first team, Rose, Curry, AD, Blake Griffin, and DeMarcus Cousins. Maybe I was too harsh on Blake. Maybe you can say he lived up to the hype because he was really good for a decent amount of time. Kobe Bryant, at 35 years old, ends up on All-NBA second team with Chris Paul, LeBron, Kawhi, and Dwight Howard. And here's third team with Bynum. Bynum and Kawhi in Phoenix is a nice duo right now. Here's all defensive first team. I would love to get Draymond Green on this team, but his efficiency has been so bad. Obviously, he's under that rookie contract as well. Him and AD defensively in the front court could be unreal because AD was on all defensive of second team and all NBA first team he was insane and the Charlotte Bobcats are the one seed in the Eastern Conference 59 and 23 the third best record in the NBA great season from us we have Memphis in round number one and we'll see if the Kyrie Anthony Davis duo can let us make a run and I think for the lineup rotations I kind of like what Bynum has been giving me but Livingston I'm going to go down a little bit um maybe Canem I'm going to go down a little bit let's go 37 to AD uh let's go 38 to Kawhi and see how far they could take us game number one against Memphis is going to go to the Charlotte Bobcats by 22 points AD with 29 and 12 Kyrie with 25 and 9 he also had four steals in this one and our playoff record in this video is 1-0, but now it is 1-1. I was going to say we can go undefeated for a little bit, but this is a good Grizzlies team. I mean, it's the grit and grind Grizzlies. You have Conley, Gay, Randolph, and Gasol. Like, that is no easy eight seed. We do end up winning game three. Scored 35 in the fourth quarter. Kyrie and AD, this combo is insane. Game number four goes to the Bobcats. We win by three, and we have a chance to win this series in five. We're going to do that. We beat them by 17 here. Marco Bellinelli, 20 points off the bench. And we're going to be taking on the Pistons with the Bulls. It's going to be the Bulls who beat the Pistons in Game 7. Derrick Rose had 33. Carlos Boozer had 20. Buol Dang had 17. Same with Vasquez. All right, let's see what happens here against the Chicago Bulls. I mean, can Derrick Rose beat us? We'll see. They also have a good team with Dang and Boozer. Game 1 does go to the Bobcats, 131-105. Can we win game number two? Yes, we can. 135-123. I do want to see if our offense has been the best in the playoffs because I feel like it has been unreal so far. Uh, points per game, it is number two. The only team there ahead of us is the Thunder. And they have Russ, Harden, and KD, three future Hall of Famers. We take a 3-0 lead. We beat them by two in the first game in Chicago. AD and Kyrie. Oh, my God. AD fouled out. Kamen fouled out. But AD and Kyrie combined for 67 points. Don't blow a 3-0 lead, and we swept them. We are 8-1 in our first two playoff series. But we got to take on the Cavs, who obviously don't have Kyrie, because we do. They don't have LeBron. They have a Jimmy Butler, Juan Carlos Navarro backcourt. Okay, J.J. Hickson, Anderson Berejao, a young Jay Crowder, Tyler Hansbrough, Corey Brewer, Brandon Rush. It's a good Cavs team. I think they I was going to say the Bulls are better, but they beat us in game number one. We were in Charlotte. Do not drop game two, and we drop game two. Okay, they beat us by one. I guess Jimmy Butler just has that it factor. He's turning it up a notch in the playoffs. He wants to prove everybody why he should have been the number one overall pick to Charlotte. Huge game three here. Oh my God, we go down 3-0. Damn, game one, we lost by five. Game two by one. Game three by three. That is brutal. Every loss has been by five or less points. And we get swept. And we lost by three. We really couldn't close out games whatsoever. Oh, wow. Two losses by three, including game three and game four. That sucks. I really thought that we were going to be able to win a title, and I don't really know what we change with this team. 
I mean, there's a chance we run it back. Gerald Wallace was at least a little bit more efficient in the playoffs, and I know how good of a defender he is. All right, well, this is about to be a notable offseason for us. I mean, I don't have to spend my money uh, aggressively, but we'll see because we do have a great one-two punch as the Cavs beat the Thunder in seven, and Jimmy Butler is your finals MVP. So the final champions in this video so far have been the Lakers, the Magic, the Suns, and the Cavs. And two uh, or two 2011 draft picks, Kawhi and Butler, have finals MVPs already on these rookie contracts. A lot of notable guys are retiring out. Jefferson, T-Mac, Jermaine O'Neal, um, Antoine Jameson. You have Sean Marion, Lamar Odom. Yeah, a lot of good players end up retiring. Timothy Mozgov. He was 33 at that point. No way. Yeah, that age has to be incorrect. Because he got a bag from the Lakers in 2016. I know he wasn't like 35 years old then. So T-Mac heads to the Hall of Fame. Um, we are not going to change anything about the Charlotte Bobcats. I do not want to become the Hornets. Uh, we're going to have some branding changes uh, to the Kings and the Warriors, two Pacific Division teams. Also, let's see for the draft lottery, are we going to have any potential good picks? I also want to see how the expansion teams did. So the Knicks were bad, but their pick is top 10 protected. So I'm not going to be getting that. I needed the Warriors to be bad, and the Warriors were pretty good. So I don't know if these picks are going to be too much. Austin Bullets, okay, they went 16 and 66, led by Gallo, Brooke Lopez, and Raymond Felton. And then you have the San Diego Wildcats, who were barely better than them. So let's see the draft lottery time. I did see our logo pop up early there. So that pick is from the Lakers, which is now a lottery pick. And yeah, we're not going to get that Knicks pick. So the Bullets end up with the number one pick here in 2014. The Knicks number two, Celtics three, San Diego Wildcats four, and the Brooklyn Nets five. We're going to have the 15th pick via the Lakers. 26 via Golden State and 30 Phoenix and as well as our pick at 29. So four first round picks, three of them, or excuse me, yeah, four first round picks, three of them being in the late 20s, uh, kind of sucks. And it is the NBA draft time. Now, I don't know if I'm going to add a ton of these rookies, so I think I'm going to try to package 26, 29, and 30. Maybe I could move up to 16 with the Denver Nuggets. They are going to say no to that. Is this where Carl Landry can help me out a little bit? Yes, it can. So I could try to package 15 and 16 to move up. Dario Sarge, number one in the mock. I hope that doesn't happen. But I do think I'm going to draft both these guys regardless. Dante XL. Oh, Austin, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're not like insanely far from Kansas. You didn't want to scout out Embiid. Andrew Wiggins goes number two to the Knicks. Okay. Number three is Nicole Jokic to the Celtics. And is Embiid going to San Diego? Or are they trading the pick? Oh my God, they're trading the pick. And their second round next year for Joe Johnson and David Lee. And Aaron Gordon is a Hawk. Is Embiid going to be? Oh my God, Embiid is falling. Levine goes to Brooklyn there at five. New Orleans at six. They are going to take Embiid. Okay, I thought they were trading the pick. So Embiid, one pick away from the 76ers. We're going to trade that pick in a future first for Paul Pierce and Ray Allen. So they do what kind of the Nets did at this time and trade for the aging Paul Pierce. All right, we'll see if that backfires as the Celtics use that pick on Bogdan Bogdanovich. There goes Dario Saric, TJ Warren, and then Glenn Robinson. So let's see the picks before us. You have Maxi Kleba, you have Clint Capella, you're going to have Yusuf Nurkic, and you're going to have Marcus Smart. Oh, that would have been a great pick. Ooh, Julius Randle's on the board. Yeah, that's going to be an easy pick for me. I'm going to take Julius Randle here with the 15th overall pick. And then at 16, I mean, there is the Nasa Samson Akupo. Could that eventually be a tampering or, you know, a little bit of a recruiting uh, decision there but no i'm gonna take gary harris out of michigan state i can't believe yeah Jokic fell to three and a beat fell to six so dante exum goes number one so we're gonna sign randall and harris pick up the team options on ad and Kyrie. Kyrie's gonna be due for a max extension next off season so john wall is unrestricted i would so go after john wall but i don't really want to make Kyrie a shooting guard trey Wark has a bunch of real offers i think we're gonna let him walk i don't really want to pay him too much money paul george would be sick but he's restricted you have tyreek evans I mean, I don't really want to get Tyreek Evans. So there really isn't anybody like too elite out here that I'm going to sign. Like it could be Carmelo Anthony, but I don't really think I need Melo right now. And honestly, next summer, like there's a chance the Warriors, I mean, I doubt the Thunder, but may maybe the Knicks are going to be bad and we could end up getting a good draft pick there. So I think I'm just going to try to get guys that could fill out this roster right now. Like we're going to have our point guard depth. I think I'm fine with this shooting guard depth right now. Maybe we look for a better small forward over Gerald Wallace. And then um, I would like to bring back Andres Biedrins. And yeah, Luke Babbitt as well. Yeah, Biedrins. Let's get him on a four-year deal, honestly. That is, can I somehow front load that? And kind of please Andres Biedrins. Let's do that. I'd like to bring back Luke Babbitt as well on a three-year deal. I mean, Josh Howard could be nice to possibly uh, go right at 
Gerald Wallace, but I wouldn't want to give him a long-term deal. I mean, we could give Danny Granger a deal. Michael Beasley wouldn't be a terrible option. I'm trying to see if there's any shooting guards. We'd move to the small forward spot. I mean, Evan Turner looks like a great fit. Five-star system fit. Maybe we do that. Maybe we give him like a two-year deal. Yeah, you know what? I'm not opposed to that. So let's do three years with a team option on the last year. That's fine with me. So let's offer Evan Turner that deal. We'll probably change his position to a small forward and we pick him up. I'm also going to try to sign Chris Kamen back as well, but I think Beadrance is going to start for us at the center position. So Trey Warwick is going to leave us in free agency. He ended up getting a $50 million contract from the Boston Celtics as John Wall heads to San Diego. Melo returns to Denver. Gordon Hayward returns to Utah. Same with Cousins to Sacramento. And I'm going to try to sign Patrick Patterson to a two-year deal as well. He's 25 years old. And just to get a third string center, we could do Jordan Hill why not on a two-year deal boom so Kyrie's a 94 80's a 91 Livingston's an 81 there goes Gerald Wallace he's starting to regress he's going to be a free agent at the end of the year we'll see what he's demanding for in free agency but with that contract off the books it'll be nice because I'm about to pay Kyrie Irving 20 plus million dollars all right so this is what the starting five is going to be Kyrie Irving Marco Bellinelli Gerald Wallace AD and Andres Biedrins we have Evan Turner Sean Livingston Luke Babbitt Chris Kamen and Joyce Randall all off the bench so like the reserves Looking really good if somebody's not performing well in the playoffs. And just going to take a look once again at our salary cap breakdown because I still feel like we have the assets to make a big trade. Like we have $37 million in cap space with it going up. I think we should still even have notable cap space with hopefully Wallace making less money, even though Kyrie's going to be making like 20. I don't even know what the max is right now. Probably $20 million. If we do take a look at a Wallace extension, does he want to come back? He does. Yeah, like that is such a nice drop off for us. So I say we just hammer this out right now. Um, Two years, $7 million. Why not? And I think we're going to try to recoup some of those assets. Also just looking at, yeah, nobody else is a free agent this year outside of Kyrie Irving, who we know we're matching any deal. So we start off the season with a six point loss against the Miami Heat, AD with 28 and 10, Wallace with 25 points. But I think this rebuild is going great. Like we're entering year number five, and I think we can set up sustainable success for the next five years and hopefully compete for a title every single year. Like I think we can have the duo of AD and Kyrie. I think we just got to find who that third missing piece is. Like I think Bellinelli is a great role player. Same with Gerald Wallace and maybe Evan Turner and those guys down the line. But I think we need that big three because we're kind of in the big three era. But also something to look at, Andres Bejans, man, he's off to a solid start right now. And I think he could be the center for the future. And here in the 2015 season, we are not the one seed here at the deadline, but we are the two seed. But looking at that point differential, I think the Cavs are noticeably better than us. And for some reason, Jimmy Baller, he's definitely going to be starting for them. But yeah, this Juan Carlos Navarro guy, 97 overall. And obviously, Jimmy is just unreal as well. I did want to see how Warwick was doing in Boston. Because if he's doing anything like Navarro, okay. Well, he's not like the number one option there. Um, Yeah, he's the number one option. But him, Rondo, and Nikola Jokic. Rondo and Jokic is kind of crazy. Um, He was never going to put up those numbers here in Charlotte because of our 1-2 of AD and Kyrie Irving. I mean, Marco Bellinelli has been rock solid for us for sure. Uh, like I said, though, I wonder if the big three error is going to commence soon. Um, Gerald Wallace, you're just lucky you're an OG Bobcat man because I do have to play you less. And I know Evan Turner isn't a good shooter, but at least he doesn't take him, I think, as much as Wallace. So what we're going to do is a little bit of a swap there in the rotation. We're going to make Wallace the sixth man. And I don't believe I could do an extension with Kyrie right now. Um, unfortunately, I cannot. So yeah, we're going to just figure out where we are at the end of the year. Once again, another quiet trade deadline. Uh, we were sellers at the start of this. I don't think I'm going to buy too much. I could. I I'm going to go back to it, but I do want to see where the Knicks thunder and warriors are at so we do have the knicks unprotected first round pick and they are 15 and 35 okay that is pretty good uh golden state and the thunder are some of the best teams in the western conference so those picks probably gonna be in the 20s and i think Julius randall is gonna eventually have a solid role for us going forward and you know what we're gonna take advantage of this trade the miami heat are desperate right now to get off of al harrington's contract let's just double check he doesn't have a player option if he does i may not do this okay and i'm gonna be getting their 2016 first round pick i'm sending them patrick patterson and jordan hill they're getting an upgrade there at big man depth. This isn't for this draft, so they assume they're going to be, be uh, better next year. And we're giving them Golden State's first this year. So the guy we knocked out in the playoffs last year, Derrick Rose, ends up winning MVP this year. Nicole Jokic is your rookie of the year. Grievous Vasquez, sixth man of the year. Once again, this man has turned into a sharp shooting, playmaking point guard over there in Chicago behind Derrick Rose. So they probably the best point guard rotation in the NBA. The Clippers with Reggie Jackson get most improved. And Bill Cartwright of the Suns is your coach of the year. All in very first team, you have Rose, Kobe, Anthony Davis once again. He didn't go back to back in MVPs, but still a top five guy in the league. Uh, Juan Carlos Navarro, man. This guy's pretty good. Joining Steph, Kawhi, LeBron, and Dwight on second team. And third team, you have Kyrie. Hey, there we go. Charlotte Bobcat. An unreal season. Maybe should have got some MVP votes. Wade, Duncan, Howard, and Bynum. Here's all defensive first team, all defensive second team with Anthony Davis. I don't know if we're going to sneak in a Randall on an all rookie team. 
We do not. So the Bobcats actually finished better. Wow, the Cavs kind of fell off a little bit towards the end of the year. Oh, it's because Chicago beat them out for the division, the old NBA role. Shout out to the Atlantic Division, man. The 40 and 42 Raptors were the best Atlantic Division team, which automatically makes them the three seed in the East. Okay. I mean, I miss when divisions mattered. But this, this is a reason why they got rid of this rule. And yeah, the Cavs, they're still a scary team in the playoffs. But luckily, oh no, they voted the fourth seed, man. So we got to face them in round number two. That's a little scary, not going to lie. So yeah, Andres Biedrins, man, did a great job in his first year as a starter for us. He's just 23 years old. So for the playoffs, as much as I liked Randall's rookie year, I don't think he's going to play. I think I'm going to opt for Chris Kamen getting those backup center minutes. We're going to have Livingston and Babbitt off the bench. Um, and Gerald Wallace as well. He's going to get like 18 minutes a night. Let's go 33 to Biedrins. 39 to AD. Uh, we could do like 31 to Evan Turner because he's a good defender. Uh, let's go 40 to Kyrie. Uh, let's go 30, like 6 to Bellinelli. Bellinelli. And because Luke Babbitt's a great shooter, let's give him the 7th man minutes. So we're taking on Philly in round 1. Drew, Ray Allen, Iggy, Thad, and McGee. So they gave up those picks for Paul Pierce and Ray Allen. Pierce was definitely not great this year as a 37-year-old. Allen as a 39-year-old. Not, not looking like the best trade in the world for Philly. They have a young Isaiah Thomas there. So let's see what happens. Game number one, we do end up beating them. We blow them out. Game number two is going to go to the Charlotte Bobcats. We end up winning 108-103 in this one. Marco Bellinelli drops 33. Game three is going to go to Philadelphia. They win 116-100. Kyrie at 29 in this one. Game number four goes to Philadelphia. It's embarrassing. I mean, Milwaukee's beating Cleveland 3-1, to which is nice, but we got to get out of round number one. We beat them by six here. Can we win game number six? Yes, we can. We win 113-89. We have a great defensive matchup here. As Evan Turner beats, uh, yeah, the team that technically drafted him in this because we did start this in 2010. So here were the numbers from round number one. Kyrie, man, he is so good. Bellinelli's got to figure out a shot, though. So we're taking on Milwaukee, who beat Cleveland for us, but oh my god, they have a sick big three of Dame, Giannis, and Bogut. That's going to be so good in a couple years with Dame and Giannis. Funny enough, that's who Milwaukee has now, and they drafted both of them in this rebuild as Brandon Jennings, kind of an afterthought off the bench behind Kyrie, or excuse me, behind Dame. So Dame versus Kyrie goes to Kyrie in game number one. He drops 49 points against Milwaukee. Game number two is going to go to the Milwaukee Bucks. They end up winning this one. Kyrie dropped 40. He has been on another planet for us in these 2015 playoffs game three goes to milwaukee 131 107 come on ad defend Giannis well oh they go up three to one most of our playoff losses i feel like have been by not a ton we stay alive we win game number five Kyrie drops 38 and 12 game number six on the road can we force a game seven go back to charlotte for that game they outscored us by five in the first we have a great second quarter great third quarter and as long as we don't have a generational choke job here, we force the game seven, and we do. We beat him by 25 points. What? Marco Bellinelli with a 23-point triple-double. AD with a massive double-double, and Kyrie drops 41. Bellinelli's trying to tell me, like, I'm the big three. You don't need to get a third guy, because I am the third man. Let's see, though. We blow them out in the first quarter by 12. We have a great first half, and it's looking like these Charlotte Bobcats are going to the conference finals. We come back down three games to one. Andres Beatrice, 30 and 10. That is insane. And it's a one versus two seed on both sides here in the conference finals in round two. I mean, it was the Kyrie Irving show offensively. It really was. So we're taking on the Bulls. Um, they're starting Vasquez. Now he's not coming off the bench. That is a great starting five. It really is a well-balanced team. Game one goes to the Bobcats. Let's go. We're three games away from making it to the NBA finals. We take a 2-0 lead, 133. 125 game three goes to the bobcats 135 133 and as long as we don't blow a 3-0 lead we're gonna be in the nba finals and we sweep them wow we win by one here we are in the 2015 finals against the phoenix suns so what's gonna be a cool storyline here is you have kyrie irving the number two overall pick from that 2011 draft versus um jimmy butler the number or excuse me Kawhi Leonard, the number one overall pick from the 2011 draft they have andrew bynum randy foy Goran Dragic, Anthony Randolph, Robin Lopez, former Bobcat DJ Augustine. All right, let's do this. Game number one goes to the Phoenix Suns. They win 138-133. Kyrie at 44-10 and 10 in this one. All right, let's not go down 2-0. Let's split the games in Phoenix. They have home court here, but let's split the games. Let's go back to Charlotte, tied 1-1. That second quarter was horrible. Third quarter was just as bad, and we get blown out in this one. All right. We're down 2-0. I forget, did I? Yeah, we're on 60 simulator difficulty for this, right? Or 55 from where I started it at. So game number three 
Come on, we gotta win this one. Can we do this? Oh my god, the first half has not been treating us kindly in these series. We have a good third quarter. We're only down by one. This is possible. We're down by one. We are tied up. Let's play. I haven't played yet. I am confident in my abilities that we're gonna be just fine. Let's do this. We have Kyrie Irving in the game. Do we have AD in the game? Yes. Oh, Kyrie is really guarded by Kawhi Leonard. Okay, Evan Turner. Uh, I'm not. See, this is the problem. Evan Turner cannot hit threes whatsoever. Kyrie is guarded by Bynum. Evan Turner, get away from me. Evan, get away. Get away. We're going to get to the rim here. We're going to get to the rim with ease. Kyrie, just get around Bynum, please. Thank you. Finish. Don't get blocked. He's going to finish that inside because he's so good. So we are up by two here. Um, Yeah, I don't know how I feel about Kyrie guarding Kawhi Leonard. They have a nice uh, lineup in right now. We may need to use a timeout depending on how many we have. And, oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to help with Anthony Davis here. Nope. No, get out of here. AD with an elite block. All right, so we got plenty of timeouts remaining. There's a chance I want more shooting. And honestly, I'm not scared about him guarding Goran Dragic. So we're going to get Luke Babbitt in this game here. Um, Ben Turner's got to guard Kawhi. I mean, I don't really think 2K is going to use Kawhi properly here. As he takes a wild three. A massive rebound from Bellinelli. Did I just see that Marco Bellinelli has 37 points? And he's guarded by Andrew Bynum. Let's make it 40. A 40 piece. How is Andrew Bynum staying with Bellinelli right now? What is going on? All right, well, can I just post up Bellinelli? Okay, let's just take that. Bellinelli for three. Beedrins, get the rebound. He missed it. Damn it. What is this defensive lineman right now? I don't really know. Well, I can't help out. Oh, God. All right, well, uh, these guys are on shooters right now. And I left Dragic open. Yeah, I got to make some defensive changes here before this actually gets ridiculous. So the guy I want guarding Kawhi, I guess, yeah, it's usually Gerald Wallace. But I'm taking, uh, do I really want to take Turner out of the game for Wallace? Let me just put Turner on him right now. Um, and then I think I'm actually gonna have to keep Turner in, but Turner is matched up on someone. Yeah, as much as I want Luke Babbitt shooting in, we're gonna keep Turner in right now. Kick it over to Kyrie, who is, okay, so they actually have good alignments on. All right, so yeah, we're gonna just call a screen, pick and roll AD and Kyrie. This should be one of the best plays in all basketball right now. Find AD inside. Who's gonna, uh, why do I do that to myself? Yeah, Bellinelli does not have good defensive intangibles, but if we do have AD guarding the paint and we could bring him out a little bit because Bynum can't shoot or I can, play drop coverage with ad we're fine we're fine okay well goran dragon just wide open for three and he's gonna knock that down and we're down by one all right i don't even know who's guarding ad right now they may send a double but the problem is we don't really have anybody come on oh there goes my controller perfect timing all right let's see how this is gonna work don't get a three second okay well i accidentally just kicked it out oh that is just great timing can we get it back to anthony davis please we got five on the shot clock ad just go to work on him please oh my god Jesus, I gotta shoot this. Oh my god, I suck at this game. All right, you can see I'm a little bit nervous right now that I'm gonna blow this. Are they gonna go to the post here? Who is Anthony Davis guarded by? Uh, I don't even know, but that is gonna be great defense by AD on Kawhi. All right, AD, it looks like you have a smaller man on you, even though Andres Bijan striving, kick it over to Kyrie. Um, yeah, AD, you have... I don't know, they put that guy back on him. All right, let's just call pick and roll. Kyrie AD, Kyrie's three ball. That's one of the best players in the NBA right there. Knocking it down. Gives us a two-point lead. All right, Kyrie, can you clamp up Goran Dragic, please? They kick it over to Kawhi Leonard. This is why I paid you money, Evan Turner. I need help. I need help. It's Kawhi. Foul him. Yeah, I guess that's where Anthony Davis has to help out a little bit. Kawhi at the line is going to knock down the first free throw. Makes it a one-point game. Has a chance right now to tie it up at 125 apiece. He's going to do just that. Kyrie Irving's gonna get to the rim. Ugh, it's just Evan Turner can't shoot. Oh, Bellinelli open. Wow, that pass did not get picked off. Marco Bellinelli has a 40 piece here in game three of the NBA Finals. We are so lucky that pass to Evan Turner did not get stolen. Why no for three? And he's gonna miss that. Get it to Kyrie, get it to Kyrie. Yes, let's go. We should be taking game three. Oh, they have multiple fouls to give anyway, so we're gonna be fine. All right, up by five, 18 seconds left. Thank God I'm not gonna choke this game in, or at least I don't think I will. Just no threes, no threes. We're fine. All right, we're fine. They wanna waste time. I don't know what the hell Kawhi is doing. Goran Dragic takes a wild three. Of course, of course he hits that. Like, are you kidding me? Um, let's get it to Kyrie. As long as he hits both of these, we should be okay. And he is an elite free throw shooter. Kyrie with a 30 piece here in game number three. And he's going to have 31 and hit some clutch free throws. So we win a thriller of a game three, 132, 130. Game number four, though, I'm scared. Can we win both in Charlotte? Yes, we can. That is a massive blowout victory. Wow. Yeah, Marco Bellinelli has been fantastic. AD has a great game here. Game five of the 2015 NBA Finals. Can we beat them? on the road go up three to two and then hopefully i don't know oh did i speak too soon that third quarter has been abysmal fourth quarter we came back we're down by two down by one we take the lead and i think we're gonna win yes we win by six let's go kyrie drops 33 
and we went on the road. And here we go, game six of the 2015 finals. I don't want to go to a game seven. I really don't in Phoenix. We got to win this one. We've been down for this whole game. Can we come back? We flirted with the comeback. We're not going to do it, though. We lost by 12. Okay, here we go. Game seven. Uh, game seven of the 2015 finals. We do not get off to a good start. We are down by 16. That's not good. Can we have a strong third quarter, please? We are blowing this. Oh, no. No. Oh, come on. We're down by 13. This is it right now. We got to go on a run. Down by 12. Down by 9. Oh, I don't think we're coming back. We're going to lose the finals by 3. That sucks. Kyrie had a 27-point double-double. Bellinelli with a 23-point double-double. Beadrins with an 18-point double-double. But Kawhi Leonard drops 30, and he's going to get his second finals MVP in this rebuild. Damn. So, yeah, that is two rings for Kawhi. Two finals MVPs, one in 2013, one in 2015. There goes Ray Allen. Oh, oh Philly, you spent two first round picks for one year of Ray Allen and a washed up year of Paul Pierce. That's not great. Tim Duncan goes out as a 90 overall. Yeah, going out while he's still on top. There goes Bill Cartwright, who just won the finals with the Phoenix Suns. He decides to retire. Tim Duncan and Ray Allen both retire as well. Um, and historical changes here. Division winners, can't go figure, will no longer automatically get a top three playoff seed in each conference. We're going to change the logo of the 76ers, change the logo of the Milwaukee Bucks. Same thing with the Wizards Bulls. Just making sure my Bobcats aren't here. So the, the league's going to look a little bit different. And let's see if that Knicks pick can get us, I don't know, Carl Anthony Towns, Devin Booker, maybe somebody like that. Let's just simulate this. And it drops to two. All right. So there's still some great players in this draft class. I could still end up with Devin Booker. I could end up with Cat or KP. Um, getting number one would have been nice. We do own the Thunders pick at 27 and our pick at 31. The Bullets have number three. And we are here at the 2015 NBA draft. Chris Stops is projected to go number one. So maybe I'm going to get the Kentucky front court potentially if KP does go number one. Orlando selects Chris Stops Porzingis out of Latvia. All right. So I could take Devin Booker. But I'm going to take the no-brainer here. Carl Anthony Towns as my center. So we're going to have the Kentucky front court of Anthony Davis and Carl Anthony Towns. The Austin Bullets at number three. Get Trey Wiles out of Kentucky. I don't know if I would have done that. d goes number four to Atlanta. Number five. Cleveland is somehow here. They were in the playoffs, but they're trading the pick. And a 2019 first for Tony Parker. So Tim Duncan retires. And Tony Parker is now a Cav, and they take Larry Nance Jr. out of Wyoming. Devin Booker is going to San Diego to pair up with John Wall in that backcourt. That's kind of sick. And Miles Turner goes number seven to the Clippers. So we did have two later first round picks. I was able to get one real guy in Pat Connington. Dalen McKinney, not so much, because it is tough to get every real player here. Still early in the 2K25 cycle. We're going to bring back Anthony Davis, Marco Bellinelli on these contracts. Chris Kamen, I mean, I could save the $3.4 million dollars. Um, but I'm actually going to bring him back right now. I think we are going to, oh, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to jinx anything yet, but LeBron James is a free agent. Do we have LeBron James money? We do not right now. I would have to clear up a decent amount of cap space, which would involve me moving on from Evan Turner, which is not impossible. The only thing is LeBron has a max deal to return to the heat. I don't think he would choose the Bobcats over them. And obviously Kyrie Irving is about to get a deal as well that we're going to have to match. And I'm going to try to make a big trade. So we're going to have to pay Kyrie a lot of money this offseason. Bellinelli is on his way to getting a payday next offseason. Obviously, Anthony Davis will be getting a payday. I wonder if I can match the money I can to get Brandon Roy from the Portland Trailblazers. If I offered Evan um, Turner, Chris Kamen, I would like to keep most of these guys. So I'll offer Pat Connington as well. And we have the Heat first round pick next year, which could have some value. Now, could I move my first round pick in 2016 and my first round pick in 2018? Would that be enough to get Brandon Roy, who's on a big deal from Portland over here to Charlotte? And it is not going to be enough. Okay. Three first round picks seems like a lot. I do have a ton of depth right now. I mean, Kendrick Perkins might have some more value than like a Pat Connington. So let's see if they would do this. They say no. And Pat Connington, if he's like the missing piece, yeah, I got to throw him in there. All right, so we got Brandon Roy on the team. Um, we are going to have to pay Kyrie Irving a ton of money, and we're going to have to look to get a backup center. Well, actually, I don't need one because we have Carl Anthony Towns and Andres Biedrins. Um, Kyrie got a $22 million a year contract from the Spurs. We're going to match that. And we have pretty much locked in our team next year. Point guards, uh, we're going to have Kyrie Irving and Sean Livingston. Shooting guards, we're going to have Roy, Bellinelli, and Harris. Um, those are kind of the wing guys. I think I'm going to try to play Bellin or 
Brandon Roy at the three spot, Wallace and Babbitt off the bench, Randall and AD, Beedrins and Towns, ton of Kentucky guys on this team. And we do have a little bit of a mid-level exception as well if we want to use it anywhere. Like Austin Day, remember him in Detroit? Like, why not? Could be a trade piece for us at one point. So let's sign him, maybe. Boom, there we go. And then LeBron resigns with the Heat. Kawhi in Phoenix. Kyrie Irving, obviously, here. Klay Thompson stays in Utah. Him and Gordon Hayward over there. Anybody switch teams? Yeah, Al Horford leaves Atlanta, go to Washington instead of what he did in real life when he went to Boston. Kemba Walker stays in Sacramento. Bargnani stays in Toronto. Whoa, and there's Tyrus Thomas. Okay, he actually turned into a fine player for the Golden State Warriors. That's cool to see. I think they fleeced us in that trade. And here we are. Kyrie Irving is a 94. AD is a 93. Roy is an 89. I'm excited about this team next year. Uh, Yeah, Gerald Wallace might be out of the rotation come playoff time. And this upcoming draft class 2016, headlined by Ben Simmons, Jalen Brown, Brandon Ingram. Pretty good draft class as well. Like guys that you didn't expect turned into studs like Pascal Siakam, DeJounte Murray, DeMonte Sabonis. So we're going to start off with an 11 man rotation. I do want to see what Gary Harris can do. I think we're, we have a lot of like open tryouts off the bench to see who's going to eventually replace Gerald Wallace when he has like a terrible true shooting percentage. But right now we're going to go Kyrie, Roy, Wallace, and AD. Beadrins was so good last year. I'm going to start him at the five spot, but he's going to play the same amount of minutes as Kat, who will eventually be the five um very soon bellinelli is going to be the full-on six man livingston babbitt randall and gary harris all getting minutes under sam cassell we are four star balanced we start off the season on the road against philadelphia and we beat them 122 116 brandon roy had 29 points in his bobcats debut so the new look bobcats are in full swing we do have Kyrie irving averaging 24 points here at the trade deadline anthony davis averaging 22 points and 11 rebounds 2.2 blocks he's going to get such a big contract extension it is funny that marco bellinelli might be better than Brandon Roy, and I gave up all of that for Roy. It's okay, though. If I win a championship, it does not matter. Andres Beatrice is a real solid big man. It's a shame like Carl Diddy Towns is eventually going to start over him because he has been very good for us. So if we just take a look here at the standings in the Eastern Conference, we have a half game lead over the Cleveland Cavaliers. As we are trying to avenge the Game 7 loss against the last year, uh, the Phoenix Suns. I don't know if we have any contract extensions. Yeah, Marco Bellinelli, I mean, he has been so good for us. I would actually feel comfortable giving him a four-year deal could I maybe get it? Yeah, about what would this be? $15, $30 million for four years? Not bad whatsoever. Welcome back to Charlotte, Marco. And Anthony Davis wins MVP here in 2016. 21 points, 11 rebounds, 1.2 steals, 2.3 blocks. I wonder if he's going to win Depoy as well. I feel like Marco Bellinelli should also be in line to get six man of the year, as AD has a very nice resume before he's going to be a free agent. Christoph Porzingis of the Orlando Magic, the number one overall pick, gets rookie of the year. Jimmy Butler. For some reason, coming off the bench in Cleveland, don't really agree with that. Um, so yeah, he's definitely better than Marco Bellinelli. Rudy Gobert gets Depoy. All right, third-year man Rudy Gobert playing for the San Diego Wildcats. He ends up getting it over Anthony Davis. Joel Embiid in New Orleans wins most improved. Sam Cassell gets coach of the year. All in very first team, you have Derrick Rose, who's 27 now. You have Steph, you have AD, Giannis at 22, and Demarcus Cousins at 25. A very young All NBA first team. And then you got Jokic, LeBron, Kawhi, Kyle Lowry, and a 37-year-old Kobe Bryant on All NBA second team. Yeah, Juan Carlos Navarro is a 99 overall. I mean, yeah, this guy's an absolute beast. Five assists, seven rebounds, 50, 40, 90 splits. He is the number one in Cleveland. He's joined by Dwayne Wade, Blake Griffin, KD, and Gobert on all NBA third team. Anthony Davis does make all defensive first team, and that may be it for the defensive teams yet, but we do get also Carl Anthony Towns on all rookie first team. And we are going to be taking on the Memphis Grizzlies in round number one, going up against Mike Conley, Alec Burks, Tobias Harris, Zach Randolph, Marcus Saul, Johnny Flynn coming off the bench. Johnny Flynn that was drafted ahead of Steph Curry in the 2009 draft. We are ready to roll for these 2016 playoffs. I feel like we can go back to the NBA Finals. And I think we are not going to play um, Gerald Wallace whatsoever in these uh, playoffs. So that means I think I might start Luke Babbitt, which kind of sounds crazy, like starting Luke Babbitt for a championship run. We're going to have Julius Randle um, get a decent amount of minutes off the bench, but nothing too crazy. Like Luke Babbitt's going to play 20 minutes a night, 38 to AD, 38 to Kyrie. We're going to stick with 35, maybe even a couple less to Brandon Roy. Um, I don't mind going a decent amount more to Andres Bedrins and Marco Bellinelli for the playoffs. Game number one against Memphis is going to go to the Charlotte Bobcats. We win 117, 180, and Kyrie combined for 46. Game number two goes to the Charlotte Bobcats. 80, 40, Kyrie 21, Brandon Roy 16 and 9. I'm noticing you, Brandon Roy. I gave up a ton for you. I would like for you to play a little bit better. Game number three goes to the Charlotte Bobcats. We blow them out by 30, 16 assists for Kyrie Irving. And we do end up sweeping Memphis. We beat them by three on the road. There we go, Brandon Roy. I mean, it did shoot 
horribly in this game, actually. He just hit seven free throws. Round number two, we are going up against Dwayne Wade, LeBron, and Chris Bosh. The Miami Heat, man. This is the Miami Heat. -els. The supporting cast is not great. The Southeast Division matchup here, and the Bobcats win game number one. Game number two is going to go to the Charlotte Bobcats. We win 141-130. 33 apiece for Kyrie and Brandon Roy. There we go. Definitely the best game, I think, in Brandon Roy's Bobcats career. We are undefeated in the playoffs. We are 6-0 and to start things off. And can we start off 8-0? and Yes, we can. Sorry, we're 7-0. and As Kyrie Irving drops 31. Brandon Roy, 29. Okay, I feel like he's been... The number two scorer. Kyrie's technically number one. Now, Anthony Davis is a little bit ahead of Roy, but Roy's been good. So, we're taking on Cleveland here in the conference finals. So, that means we're taking on Tony Parker. Well, yeah, Juan Carlos Navarro as an elite backcourt. I guess I see why Jimmy Butler is coming off the bench. I would play him over Travis Allo at the three spot, but they are having him be the sixth man. They beat us by game one, or they beat us by one in game one here in Charlotte. Damn, all right, so that's our first playoff loss here, and it comes in the conference finals. We bounce back with a game two victory. We win by 20. The big three all scored 20 plus. I just be had a nice game. Game number three is gonna go to the Cleveland Cavaliers. They end up winning by six. Damn, Kyrie had 30 and 10 in this one. Game number four goes to the Cavs. All right, all right. Maybe we're just not built like that. Marco Bellinelli, three of 12 from the field. Anthony Davis, six of 19. Randall, four of 13. When it matters the most. Can we come back down three to one? We cannot. All right. So I lose game seven to the NBA finals. I make a massive move getting Brandon Roy. We're the one seed. Vibes are so high. And I did um, number two overall pick in Carl Anthony Towns. And we lost in five games. Five games to the Cavs after dominating the first two rounds. That is very unfortunate. The Cavs are going up against the OKC Thunder. Man, I feel like they are a better team than us on paper. And the Cavs are going to win in seven. And Juan Carlos Navarro is your finals MVP. Look at that. So the Spurs via Portland win the lottery odds here in 2016. They could take Ben Simmons, Brandon Ingram, Jalen Brown. We are going to have the 22nd pick via Miami. Um, and then the Trailblazers from the Brandon Roy trade are going to have our pick at number 31. All right, so we are going to bring back Sam Cassell on a two-year contract extension. So I think I'm going to give the Brandon Roy experiment one more year. And if it doesn't work out, then maybe he gets moved at the deadline or something like that. Ben Simmons is your number one overall pick to the San Antonio Spurs. Jamal Murray goes number two to the New York Knicks. Jalen Brown, three to the Atlanta Hawks. Ingram, four to the Wizards. Okay, Austin Bullets take Demonte Savonis at five. DeJounte Murray, six to the Pelicans, the team he's currently on in real life. And we ended up getting a point guard, Alex Caruso out of Texas A&M. Pat McGee, um, I'll just bring in on a two-way. So we are going to bring up... Uh, bring back yeah Joyce Randall and Gary Harris on their team options here from the 2014 draft um the free agencies headlined by Dante Green Chris Paul and Andrew Bynum Anthony Davis is obviously going to be getting a bag from me do we have any other free agents it doesn't look like it so we really can't do anything until we bring back AD three years 88 million dollars let's do that so we would have a little bit of money to spend like do we want the enforcer James Johnson he's Jalen we could kind of go after as well uh, Seth Curry, also not a terrible option. I don't know. I feel like my rotation is kind of set for next year. Like we have plenty of point guard options, same with shooting guard. Um, small forward could be Luke Babbitt. It might be Brandon Roy to start off the year. Gerald Wallace is not going to be in the rotation this year. Uh, we have plenty of power forwards, two good centers. I'm ready to see if this core can actually win it all. Because if they can next year, we're going to be making some moves. As Kevin Durant, wow, leaves the Thunder and comes to the Southeast Division to the Atlanta Hawks. Well, that's kind of a shocker as now Dwight Howard weaves the Orlando Magic to go to the Phoenix Suns. Chris Paul weaves the Pelicans to replace Dwight Howard in Orlando as the star. Bradley Beal stays in Minnesota. Okay, we just saw some notable switches there at the top. So Brandon Roy started in regress, definitely keeping an eye on that. 80s and 95, Kyrie's a 95 as well. Carl Anthony Towns is an 86. As much as I like and have been impressed by Andres Bejans in this video, uh, he is going to come off the bench and we're going to have Cat start. All right, so we are here in the 2017 season. I think we are going to start with Babbitt. As I was starting uh, small forward, we're going to have Brandon Roy, Kyrie Irving in the backcourt, AD, and Carl Anthony Towns in the front court. Yeah, we're going to see what Bellinelli, uh, Andre Speedrin, Sean Levinson, Gary Harris. They want to go Austin Day, maybe over Julius Randle, which I'm fine with for now. We are four-star balance under Sam Cassell um, with our uh, system proficiency. We start the season at home against the Portland Trailblazers. Brandon Roy's old team, it would be nice if we could start off the season with a dub. And we do end up beating them. We blew them out by 41 points. AD was in foul trouble, but had 28 points and 11 rebounds, four assists, four steals, two blocks. 
Hopefully there is an MVP season upon us. I would like to get it um, from Anthony Davis. Just can fully blossom in as our top player. Um, but I don't want to disrespect Kyrie Irving because he's been here uh, one year longer than AD and has been incredible for us. Very similar record from last year at this year's deadline. We are 30 and 13. It's us versus the Cleveland Cavaliers pretty much in the Eastern Conference. So I'm try trying to just develop a better team than them. But they, I don't know, they kind of owned us last year. So I am nervous that if I keep this team the same, we're not going to be able to beat them. Brandon Roy, he, he's been fine for us. Obviously not the Brandon Roy we thought we were going to get when we acquired him, but it's fine as long as he could be playing efficient basketball, we're going to be okay. So I'm going to re-sign Sean Livingston on a two-year contract. He has been an OG Bobcat, so I do want to keep him around. And I'm going to give Andres Bedrins a two-year extension as well. It pretty much takes us to the end of the Carl Anthony Towns contract. So that is going to expire before I have to pay Cap, so I'm okay with it. I'd like to bring back Luke Babbitt as well on a three-year deal. He's been an elite three-point shooter for us. And there is the Anthony Davis MVP season. 22 points, 11.8 rebounds, 3.6 assists. That is his third MVP award, and he's 24 years old. There's a chance AD is on pace for the GOAT debate at the end of his career, but we do need to get him a ring and hopefully a finals MVP as the Minnesota Timberwolves went 70 and 12 this season. Oh my God, I'll have to see who's on that team. That's kind of insane. So I guess they're the best team of the week. Is that? No, Kevin Durant didn't sign in Minnesota. So they have Bradley Beal, Kevin Love, Jonas Valanciunas, Martel Webster, Al Thornton, Tony Douglas, Costa Kufos, DJ White, his team to beat. How did this team win 70 games? I mean, Bradley Beal was phenomenal. Kevin Love is still pretty good, but I feel like our duo was better of Kyrie and AD, and I didn't win no 72 games. Um, all right, so that, that's interesting. As we did have Anthony Davis lead this team in scoring. Marco Bellinelli has been also an elite three-point shooter since we acquired him a couple of years ago. Carl Anthony Towns in his first year as a starter, 12 and a half points, nine rebounds, 2.1 assists. Hopefully he becomes better with his outside shot over time. We're taking on Memphis in the playoffs once again in round number one. Debating if I want to play Austin Day, do I want to play Gary Harris? I'm actually probably not going to play Gary Harris just because we do have uh, Marco Bellinelli coming off the bench. So let's go 30 to cap. Let's go 40 to AD. I'd like to go probably more to Kyrie. So yeah, we are going to go 40 minutes to AD and 40 minutes to Kyrie. We should beat Memphis in round number one again. We've kind of owned the grit and grind Grizzlies in this video. Let's see if we're able to beat them. I guess another Southeast Division team. We beat them in six. I mean, last year we ended up beating them in four. So I hope this means we didn't get worse. But Anthony Davis is off to an incredible start in the playoffs. We're taking on the Indiana Pacers, led by Paul George and the Manimal and Roy Hibbert here in round number two. Can we advance to the conference finals? All right. Well, we ended up losing in five. I think this is a wake-up call. I mean, I, I maybe I'm getting complacent with this team because I said I wanted to possibly have a dynasty in the back half of this rebuild um, in, in this video. And the back half of it, we lost last year in the conference finals, and we lost in the semi um, finals this year in the conference. So that goes to show you, I think we are not near our goal. And we're going to have to make some corresponding moves to that this offseason because that, that's flat out embarrassing. And uh, Sam Cassell might get fired uh, as the Minnesota Timberwolves ended up sweeping the Pacers in the NBA Finals as Kobe Bryant ends up retiring this year. Yeah, there goes Kobe Bryant and Paul Pierce to the Hall of Fame. And the Utah Jazz win the 2017 draft lottery. They could take Jason Tatum, Donovan Mitchell, any one of those guys. Wildcats are going to be picking number two and number seven, Philadelphia at three. And yeah, we are going to fire Sam Cassell. Unfortunately, that hire just did not work out. We are going to hire Tom Thibodeau to be the next Charlotte Bobcats head coach, hopefully preaching defense over here in Charlotte. So I want to see if I can maybe get Al Farouk Aminu from the LA Lakers and their 2018 first round pick for Brandon Roy. Uh, they are going to say no to that. I mean, do I have any players that I would throw in? I guess I would throw in Alex Caruso. That won't work. And I'll throw in um, a first round pick in 2019. Okay, they don't want to do that. I want to find a trade partner for Brandon Roy. It's tough right now. As Lonzo Ball actually goes to Utah with the number one overall pick. Kyle Kuzma goes number two to San Diego. Jason Tatum, three to Philadelphia. Uh, that's ironic. Number four, Darren Fox goes to the Knicks. Five, Donovan Mitchell to Washington. Uh, six is going to be Dennis Smith Jr. to Denver. And San Diego's second first round pick is going to be Markel Fultz. So unfortunately, we weren't able to draft anybody real on this draft, which just becomes a waste of a first round pick towards the end of the day. So we will sign Jaden Love. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. Um, So Carl Anthony Towns, Gary Harris, Joyce Randall back on the team options. Um, but yeah, like I said, though, I still want to make a noticeable move this offseason just because he's an OG. I'm bringing back Gerald Wallace. All right. So we are going to be making this trade with the Brooklyn Nets. Zach Levine put up a very inefficient 28 points per game last year. But yeah, we are going to be sending Julius Randall uh, from the 2014 draft class to somebody else in that draft class. But yeah, we're going to also be sending Brandon Roy 
to Brooklyn as well. Um, and we're going to be getting Zach Levine and Jason Thompson. And we are going to be sending Jason uh, Thompson and our first round pick, Jaden Love, to Sacramento, or excuse me, to San Diego for their first round pick in 2019 and a top 10 protected Kings pick in 2018. And in free agency, I'm going to hopefully sign him. And we are, we're going to get Trevor Booker. He's going to replace, I think, the Austin Day slash Joyce Randall role. As the Marcus Cousins leaves the Sacramento Kings to go to the San Diego Wildcats. Trey Wark, a former Bobcat, is going to go to the New York Knicks. Giannis gets a big deal from the Bucks. Gordon Hayward gets a big deal from the Lakers, so we didn't get to see Lonzo and Hayward there in Utah. Anthony Davis is a 95 overall. Kyrie's a 95. Carl Anthony Towns is up to an 89. Once again, though, we are led by these top two guys. I just hope the supporting cast around them is a little bit better. And this is going to be the nine-man rotation. Kyrie Levine, which probably has its issues defensively. Luke Babbitt, Anthony Davis, and Carl Anthony Towns in that front court. You have Gary Harris, who's going to get big minutes this year. Marco Bellinelli, Sean Livingston, and Andres Biedrins off the bench. System proficiency is two and a half star defense. That's going to become an issue, I think, over time. Hopefully, that can get to like three and a half stars by the end of the year. That may be a little bit too optimistic. We start off with a blowout win against the Toronto Raptors. And then we blow out the Atlanta Hawks, who have Kevin Durant. We beat the Golden State Warriors by three, who have Steph Curry. We're off to a good start. All right, so we do have the first year of the All-Star Draft. Anthony Davis is uh, a captain, actually. Uh, he has been having an insane year, better than his MVP season from last year. He did draft his teammate, Kyrie Irving, uh, who is under 20 points per game this year. Maybe he's taking a little bit of a hit. But we are 44-8. and eight. We have been incredible. Um, oh, my God, a 17.9 point differential. I don't know if that's a Tibbs effect. I don't know if that's a post Brandon Roy effect. Either way, we have had an incredible start to this year's season. It could be Carl Anthony Towns having a great year number three. Either way, we're playing very well, and I don't know if I want to mess up the vibes of this team. Like, that point differential, that record, I think we're legit. I think we're for real. Uh, we can get an extension done with Kyrie Irving, so let's make him a Charlotte Bobcat for three more years, technically four more years, including this one, so we're chilling there. And Anthony Davis, who did have a better year than last year wins his fourth mvp award but none of that matters if we can't get him a ring he also gets deep boy all right anthony davis maybe has been the best player in the league and we went 73 and 9 under tibbs who held this team back was it sam cassell was it brandon roy was it julius randall i don't know but here we are having an unreal season this has to be the year this has to be the year we go all the way 73 and 9 we had an elite point differential. I'm just going to make sure that our stars play a ton of minutes in the playoffs. Like I think Sean Livingston is going to play like 13. I mean, Gary Harris has been a nice uh, piece for us going forward. I'm just going to go 38 to AD, 38 to Kyrie, maybe 34 to Cat. And let's hope that we could beat KD and the Atlanta Hawks, who also have Delonte West, Jalen Brown, Aaron Gordon, and Tyson Chandler in round number one. Of course, we lost game number one. Of course we did. But then we ended up winning four unanswered to beat the Atlanta Hawks in five. All right. So we're in round number two. The round we lost uh, to the Pacers last year. We're taking on a Raptors team led by Andrea Bargnani and Chris Middleton. This should be a conference finals appearance for us, and we are going to do that. We are going to beat them in five, and we are taking on the Milwaukee Bucks here in the conference finals. This Milwaukee Bucks team is led by Giannis Antetokounmpo, who they were able to draft in this video. They were also able to draft Damian Lillard. They still have Andrew Bogut. Brandon Jennings is one of the best six mans in the league. And over on the Western Conference side, you have Golden State versus Minnesota. We lose game one by five. Okay. <laughs> game number two. Oh my God, we lose game two. Are the Bobcats cursed? 73 wins and I can't get to the finals. We lost game three. Oh my God. I can't win with this team. I can't. Game four. We do end up winning game four by five. Game number five. We ended up losing in five. Okay. So since we made it to the finals um, back, uh, what was that? 2015. Um, we have yet to go back since. I thought that was going to be the start of things. And yeah, we ended up losing in the conference finals, conference semifinals, and then the conference finals once again. Man, that is so disappointing. 73 wins just to lose in the conference finals. Oh, man. I don't really know what to do with this team once again. This is so frustrating as Giannis gets finals MVP in a series they lost. That is kind of insane. There goes Gerald Wallace, an OG Bobcat. There goes Dirk Nowitzki. All these years, I tried signing Mike Boonholzer to be my head coach, and they blocked it every single time, and then he ends up retiring. Wow, Eric Spolstra retired as well. Dirk heads to the Hall of Fame. 
couple of jersey retirements you see there. And in the 2018 draft, the 76ers get the number one pick, so they could take Luka Doncic. Number two is Brooklyn. Number three is Houston. The Trailblazers have our pick at 31 from the Brandon Roy trade. So we didn't have a draft pick in this draft. It ends up being Luka Doncic number one to uh, Philadelphia. Number two was DeAndre Aiden to Brooklyn, and Marvin Bagley went three, then Triple J and Trey Young. So we are going to pick up the team option on Alex Caruso and Carl Anthony Towns. Um, Kimba Walker and Carmelo Anthony are going to be free agents. So are Zach Levine and Gary Harris, who I'm sure are going to want a decent amount of money. At least Zach Levine does. He's not a good system fit under um, Tom Thibodeau. So I do wonder, could there be a sign and trade in here? Maybe we are going to sign Zach Levine to a five-year, $108 million extension. Gary Harris, four years, $36 million. And I'm going to try to make a trade with the Boston Celtics. I'm going to try to get Victor Oladipo for Zach Levine, just because I think he can complement Kyrie better defensively. Uh, they're going to counter offer it. Sean Livingston. For a young Bam Adebayo, as much as I don't want to move Sean Livingston, I think I should do this trade because Bam could definitely replace Andre Spiedrins as the backup center when he leaves. Yeah, I'm going to do this trade. This is a big switch up here in the 2018 offseason. And we're going to bring back an old friend on a one-year deal, DJ Augustine, and probably play over Alex Caruso as the backup point guard. So Kyrie Irving, 95, AD, 95, cats up to a 91 overall, man. Can this team please go far for once? Okay, now this team is 49 and 3. 49 and 3. But I have no confidence that we're going to get the job done. We have a 22.4 point differential. That is one of the highest point differentials at the trade deadline or in February I have ever seen. But will it matter? Will a big three of AD, Kyrie, and Cat, I mean, all the depot has been really good for us as well, get the job done? Or is it just going to be another early playoff exit? We also can lock up Anthony Davis. I mean, there's two years left of this rebuild, but I got to make sure he's re-signed anyways. As Anthony Davis wins MVP, um, once again, it's just another accolade for him, another deep boy, but he has no ring. We went 77 and five. That's probably my best record in NBA 2K25. Ah, we didn't get Kyrie Irving on an all-NBA team, which makes me sad because he was here before AD. This was Kyrie's team before it was AD's team. We're taking on the Cavs in round number one. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm just nervous. I'm nervous because this team was so freaking good and a team like Cleveland could beat us. We do end up gentlemen sweeping them, which is off to a good start. Anthony Davis averaged 31 points and 12 and a half rebounds in that series. We're taking on Memphis, who we have owned so far. Tobias Harris um, is currently their small forward, and we won in five. And we have a new face here in the conference finals, the Washington Wizards. So they got Emmanuel Moutier, Mane Ellis. They have Brandon Ingram, Dante Green's a 98 overall, Al Horford, Donovan Mitchell, Hassan Whiteside, Andre Blatch. It's a good team. Southeast division team as well. We win the first two games, though. We lose game three, win game four, lose game five, and we win game six to go to the NBA finals, finally. So for the first time in a few years, we're in the NBA Finals going up against the Utah Jazz, who have a sick backcourt of Clay and Lonzo Ball. They signed Rudy Gobert, funny enough. They have a young Triple J. They have Darren Williams off the bench, James Johnson. Let's see if we can beat them. Game number one goes to the Charlotte Bobcats. I guess if you consider them as the Hornets and the Jazz, this is the Gordon Hayward Bowl. Game two goes to the Bobcats, 118-107. We are two games away from winning it all. And game three goes to Charlotte, 147-103. Cat with 27 and 12. Trevor Booker with a double-double. And are we going to win the NBA Finals in Utah in four games? Not even sweating this one out whatsoever. After losing just five, five regular season games, which is kind of insane. Anzo Ball's going to take a three in Marco Bellinelli's face. And he's actually going to hit it, making it a three-point game. All right, so this one is far from over here. Up by three on the road. Two minutes and 15 seconds left. You know we got to go to Anthony Davis, who is guarded by Jaron Jackson Jr., a very good defender, but a very young defender. Are they gonna, They're not going to send the double inside. Okay, AD with the right hand. That is no good. Are you kidding me? Why do I never hit post hook shots in this game ever? Also, why is Trevor Booker in this game guarding Darren Williams? He's 12 rebounds. Bellinelli trying to guard Lonzo. Did not get much help defense right there. Luckily, he misses it. 
Cap picks up his 12th rebound. Let's get the ball to the car. The Italians, he's guarded by Lonzo Ball. Inside, they're going to send the double. This should weave an Anthony Davis three. Oh, and then Rudy Gobert recovers so well. All right, so we are guarded by a smaller man. Let's take the shot with AD, please. Anthony Davis knocks that down. He's got 27 and 14 on the smaller defender right there. He gets it done to put us up by five. So they are going to get Darren Williams uh, kind of open right there, but Monzo did not find him. He's going to take it off balance three. That is no good. Rebounded by Trevor Booker. Did Luke Babbitt foul out? Why is Trevor Booker in this game? I'm not sure why. All right, Kyrie Irving is guarded by Jaron Jackson Jr. That means Darren Williams is guarding Carl Anthony Towns. Let's get it to him inside. They're going to send the double, but this is why I hate Trevor Booker out there. All right, Cat, come on. Just score over him, please. Thank you. Oh, my God, Cat. Really? And that wasn't Darren Williams. I mean, I hit it. That was, I think, James Johnson. I don't know. Either way, that was not a good shot. Kyrie mauls Darren Williams there. Oh, my God. All right, let's see. The Kyrie and AD pick and roll. Yeah, Kyrie's going to pull up right there. Even if he misses it, Anthony Davis would be right there. But he doesn't miss. Kyrie's got also 15 and 10 in this game. That could be the Dak. Jaron Jackson Jr. is going to take a three. He's going to miss that. And the Charlotte Bobcats are going to be winning the 2019 NBA Finals. And we do it. We win it all. Thank God. If I went this whole video without a ring, I would have been so disappointed with this team. I mean, we went 77 and 5. There should have been no reason why we don't end up dominating in the playoffs. And we did. We just swept the Utah Jazz in the NBA Finals. Luke Babbitt gets his first ring. But yeah, Anthony Davis has like four or five MVPs now. And he's got a ring as well to show for it. No, it shows the Charlotte Hornets uh, uniforms. Okay, or the uh, championship gear. Damn it. All right. I, I was still hoping to bring prosperity to the Bobcats uh, logo and that era. But no, we are technically the Hornets in this championship celebration. And yeah, obviously, Anthony Davis finals MVP. He is one of one right now. And yeah, he averaged 26 and a half, 14 and a half, and five assists. He was unreal. Hopefully, we can end this video off going back to back next year. Oh, my god that jason thompson trade just earned me the second and third picks in the 2019 draft because last year that king's top 10 protected pick they were number nine so i didn't get it that is insane so is the number one overall pick gonna be zion williamson yes it is i would have loved zion um we are definitely taking john morant with the second overall pick now third overall pick i could take like rj barrett um obviously but I may trade it. Not gonna lie, most of these offers stink though, so I won't be trading it. I think I'm gonna take, I'm just gonna take RJ Barrett with this pick. And yeah, John Morant's a 79, RJ Barrett is a 75 at the age of 19. Um, we did take Conrad Riley there at 32 and Lester Jennings there at 64. Pick up the team options on Bam and Caruso. A lot of notable free agents here in 2019. Cat is restricted. He would obviously get a bag from us. Well, Katie Weave, potentially as cat gets a deal from the orlando magic four years 117 we are going to be matching that as kevin durant does resign with the atlanta hawks chris paul leaves orlando to go to dallas i could bring back like dj augustine or any of those guys on like a one-year deal but i kind of like the young core coming off the bench and for the final player progression 80s up to a 96 carries a 95 cat is a 92 and we have a great supporting class i don't know why i said supporting class meant supporting cast and we are going to be going into the 2020 season after winning our first ring and going 77 and 5 throughout the regular season with a loaded roster so Kyrie's definitely going to obviously start you have 80 cat is Babbitt going to be the three? I guess so, man. Shout out to Luke Babbitt getting like a lot of screen time in this video. Um, Old Debo is going to be the starting shooting guard. Uh, you're going to have Bellinelli, um, Gary Harris, I guess Beadrance off the bench, even though we had Bam. So I thought by this time Beadrance was going to be gone. I got 10 minutes remaining. I might as well just give it to John Morant, right? Like that's an elite backup point guard. Uh, system efficiency or three-star defense uh, because Luke Babbitt is such a bad defender, I guess. It's funny that we were like two and a half star defense last year. And we still won 77 games. Does system proficiency matter? I don't know. It is crazy that like Juan Carlos Navarro has become the best player in the NBA. All-star captain, 31 and a half points, 27 years old. I may be a casual, but this could also be a guy that I had no idea was in the league. And yeah, in 2008, he did play. Uh, he didn't play for a while, played for the Grizzlies in 2008. They were so bad that year that he decided to never play in the NBA again. But in this save, he has turned into one of the greatest players of all time as we are 48 and four. I guess this team is fully kicking in now with Carl Anthony Towns becoming an elite player behind AD and Kyrie Irving. Anthony Davis is your MVP. Zion Williamson averaged 27 points for the Lakers and is your rookie of the year. And he came off the bench. 
Oh my god. All right. AD ends up winning Depoy. We ended up uh, losing one more game this year. We went 76 and 6. And we're going to be taking on the Boston Celtics in round number one. We had four guys score 17 plus. How's Old Depot as a three point shooter? Very good. 38% from three this year. Taking on Boston in round number one. The Celtics have Sean Livingston, Bobcats legend. It's cool to see him starting somewhere else. Courtney Lee, Dylan Brooks, Larry Nance. There's Jokic, Zach Levine off the bench. And uh, Jim Otoka off the bench. I don't think he's related to Ime as we sweep them in round number one. Great job by the front court, Cat and AD. Taking on the New York Knicks in round number two. I haven't really seen them in the playoffs. They did end up getting Julius Randle at one point here. They do have Steven Adams in the front court. Jamal Murray coming off the bench because you got Fox starting. Trey Warwick as your starting shooting guard, if you remember him. Are we able to beat them in advance of the conference finals? We are 8-0 to start off the playoffs. Taking on the Cleveland Cavaliers here in the Eastern Conference Finals. Can we advance to the NBA Finals? We are 12-0. All right, we are going for the holy 16-0 in these playoffs. <laughs> Anthony Davis probably would have been Conference Finals MVP, but Kyrie Irving shot 65% from the field as a guard. He was unreal. We're taking on Minnesota here in the NBA Finals. This is our third Finals appearance in this video. We are 1-1. One one. We are two wins away from going 16-0. And it ends right there. We ended up losing 115-111 in Minnesota. Damn. Game four goes to Charlotte. Game five goes to Charlotte. So we end the 2020 playoffs with a 16-1 playoff record. Anthony Davis has one of the sickest resumes for a 27-year-old. That's now two finals MVPs. He now has six MVPs. He has multiple depoys, seven-time All-Star, seven-time first-team All-NBA as a 27-year-old. And that is going to conclude this 10-year Charlotte Bobcats rebuild. Man, this was a really fun team. Three rings, or excuse me, two rings feels like we kind of underachieved. I feel like we should have got two to three more. And that is going to be for me. Drop a thumbs up if you guys do enjoy these longer rebuilds and you want to see another 10-plus year rebuild. Let me know what team, era, year amount in the comments below and I'll make sure to do the most like comment in the near future and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.